Hello folks. Welcome back to Moose Monday and my name is Moose Henderson and this is Moose Henderson Wildlife Photography. Today we're going to be talking about ground pods and you can see here that I've got two different ground pods here. One is uh, about a 12 inch size and the other one's like an 8 inch size and we'll go over why I have the two different size ground pods here later on in the video. Also at the end of the video I'll show various uses and various pictures of images taken with these ground pods so stick around for that. Now if you would like to you can buy a commercial ground pod. There's one that's uh, made by Naturescapes. I think it's called a Skimmer 2 and it's uh, like polyethylene or something like that. It's a very good quality. It costs you about a hundred to a hundred and twenty five dollars depending on whether you purchase the riser for it or not. There's also one I think made by Really Right Stuff called an Ecla and again it's uh, in the hundred and a quarter range. I did a video a couple of years ago about how to make a ground pod and I'll link that up here and you're welcome to go watch that but you can make your own ground pod for about ten bucks by just buying a uh, frying pan that has a removable handle taking off the handle, drilling a hole in the bottom, and and mounting a, uh, a bolt through the hole. And the video goes through and explains how to do it step by step. If you'd rather have something written, I'll link down in the description a write-up I did on how to make a ground pod. Basically the same as the video, except it's in written form with photographs. And I'll link that down here below but we're not going to go over how to make a ground pod in this video because I've already done that. In this video we're going to go over how to use a ground pod. Now generally speaking when you have a lens like this zoom lens, this is a 100 to 500 millimeter lens and it's attached on to a Canon R7 camera body. So unless the light is relatively low and you want to shoot with a relatively low ISO, you probably don't need a ground pod for this because you can easily hand hold this camera even when you're down low to the ground. Now when the light does start to drop and you start get to the lower shutter speeds, then a ground pod is really nice. And I like to use a smaller ground pod like you see here, the 8 inch one is excellent for something like the 100 to 500. And all that you do is mount that on here to the ground pod. And then now you have a base that you can use to slide across the beach, across the snow, or across the ground to be able to get the type of images that you want. Now you'll see that it's rocking around a bit right now and that's because there's a bolt through the bottom of it. But once you get on to sand or the dirt surface or even on to snow, that bolt no longer becomes an issue because it sinks down into the ground and then the flat plate is able to give you a very steady base. Now, as I mentioned, I have an 8 inch one and I also have a 12 inch one. The 8 inch one is very good for your smaller lenses, like up to 400 millimeters or so. 400 millimeter might be an f5.6 or so. When you start getting the big lenses, like a 400 f2.8, a 500 f4, or a 600 f4, or maybe even a Tamron uh, 150 to 600 millimeter or Nikon up to 600 millimeter and stuff, then you're going to need something a little bit more stable. And that's where the larger frying pan comes into its own. And you'll see that each of my uh, ground pods have an Arca Swiss type plate adapter in the bottom. The smaller one has a smaller plate adapter because I usually have a smaller lens attached to it, whereas the larger ground pod has a larger plate adapter on the inside of it because that gives you a little bit more room to be able to adjust your foot back and forth to be able to level things. Let's go ahead and take the 600 millimeter and place it in here on the foot. 
and it would help if I open it wide enough. There we go. So now we're on the foot and as you can see I can loosen this and adjust the lens back and forth as I need to to be able to balance the lens on the ground pod itself. Now you can see that the lens and the ground pod and the camera are all bonded together making one solid unit that you can slide across the ground. The 12 inch type of ground pod is also large enough that you can put a 1.4 teleconverter in or maybe even a 2x teleconverter inside the framework of the frying pan and that allows you to just have an extra area where you can carry things. You can also put a little bit of bird seed in here if you need to or I don't know maybe even a snack for yourself and it just makes it very convenient as an extra place to carry things and like I say you can slide this along the beach along the snow along the ground and of course it's going to slide a lot easier than it does on this bumpy table now you may find that your camera is a little bit too low to the ground when using the ground pod in this type of situation and one thing you can do is to put the ground pod like up on a bean bag say you have a bean bag like that and now your ground pod and your camera combination are up a little bit higher and that gives you a little bit more clearance if you need it another option is to actually put like a gimbal head or a ball head on your ground pod. Now let's take and set the camera aside and then we'll take this uh, plate off the bottom and then we'll take and attach either a ball head or a gimbal head to the top of the ground pod. So now you can see we have a gimbal head on here. This is this could very easily be a ball head or something else like that. And now you still have the same option of putting your camera on top of this ground pod. And now you have the convenience of being able to use the gimbal type movements or a ball head type movement with your camera while being mounted on a relatively stable support. Now I don't do this very often but it, it is an option that is open for you if you need to get your camera up a little bit and you still want the ground pod flat on the ground. Now to take it off it's just a simple matter of unscrewing it And of course you sound like Phil Collins when he's clanking on the cymbals, but uh, hopefully you're not disturbing any wildlife while you're doing that. And then you just put the Arca Swiss plate back on the bottom, or Arca Swiss clamp back on the bottom of your ground pod, and there you are, you've got your working ground pod again. Now you can see the 8 inch ground pod has a higher riser on it than does the 12 inch ground pod and again that's by design. I wanted to get the camera up a little bit higher off the rim of the 8 inch frying pan so I used a regular 2x4 to cut out that particular riser and this one was a 1x4 that I cut the riser out of. Now some people may be telling you well I don't need a ground pod my tripod goes down close to the ground. Well yeah that is correct tripods do go down relatively close to the ground. Let's take a look at my tripod and how I can take my tripod down very close to the ground. Okay, so here we are. I've got my camera set up on a gimbal head 
and I've got my tripod and my tripod has the adjustments here on the leg so I can just pull those adjustments out and then gradually lower my tripod so that it goes as low as it can go. And there we go. As you can see, my tripod is relatively low to the ground. The middle of the lens is maybe, oh, I would call that 20 inches off the ground. So we're truly not at ground level. If you were photographing something like a sanderling, one of those little birds, those little beach birds, or like a ground squirrel or something like that, you're still going to be a considerable amount of distance above the level of the eye of your animal. So you can see here how much of a difference there is between even the tripod being at its lowest level and a ground pod. Now your tripod may go down just a little bit lower than this, say it goes down another 10 inches or so, well you're still 10 inches up off the ground as opposed to something like a ground pod where you're maybe two or three inches up off the ground. And that can really make a massive difference in the quality of your photographs. So here we have the ground pod in action and usually I'll rotate my hat around and I'm usually lying somewhat in an angle and supporting my lens and looking carefully at the bird or the squirrel or whatever it is I'm photographing and as with a lot of wildlife photography a lot of the time you're just waiting and waiting and waiting but after a few minutes a few seconds a few hours whatever it happens to be you do finally get some pretty good pictures now the thing that you can do is just slide this across the ground as you see here and of course if you're on a beach or on the snow it slides a lot better but it just makes it very convenient to go from point A to point B and not be scaring the animal or uh, causing them all to leave and you not get any pictures. Now the other thing you can do is to use your ground pod in your vehicle. Let's take a look at how that works. Okay a lot of times I'm photographing some animals from the inside of my truck and I need to have a really stable support to be able to photograph them because sometimes I'm waiting a long time to be able to do it. Now there are trucks that and cars that have seats that go up and down not just back and forward but also up and down. Well I'm not lucky enough to have one of those trucks like that. This is a relatively less expensive truck so my seat is at one level and I can't have it go up and down. So I have to be able to put my lens where I need it on the frame of the door. And sometimes that means I need to get my lens a little higher and I use a ground pod to do that. I usually start out with a bean bag. And this is a bean bag called a Skimmer 2. It's by Naturescapes. It's a good quality bean bag. Now I do have a bean bag called a, a Blub, B-L-U-B-B, -B -B, the big lens ultimate bean bag. You see that this is the Blub, and I did a review on this, and I'll link that up here also. But I don't use this bean bag along with my ground pods. It's just not the the best type of design. So here we have our bean bag on the window and we need to be able to put our camera on here. So over here in the passenger seat I have my camera and I already have the uh, ground pod attached to the lens and you can see the lens is too low for me to see through without scrunching way down. So by rotating the ground pod underneath there and then settling down the beans and the bean bag 
it puts my lens at the ideal height to be able to shoot and I'm able to photograph deer I'm able to rotate the lens back and forth I can do minor movements up and down things like that and it just makes it really really convenient to have a very stable support and to also have that little bit of extra height. Now sometimes the animals are a little bit closer than uh, they are at other times and on those occasions I want to hide myself a little bit and to hide the camera lens a little bit. So let's get this out of the way and in the door of my truck I have this camel cloth and it's more problem to set up but once it's set up it's done so as you can see I've just put the camel cloth over the portion of the door and now you can see I can pretty much hide behind this camel cloth now you still have to be somewhat careful with your movements because if you're moving a lot on the inside of your truck or the inside of your car the animals can see that but this does provide you just a little bit more concealment than just being inside your vehicle so that gives you a basic rundown of how I use a ground pod and I use one I would say 30 or 40 percent of the time that I'm out taking photographs. I'll have a lot of images here after I'm done talking of various animals that I have photographed both on the ground using a ground pod and also from the inside of my truck by using the ground pod on top of the beanbag. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you would, please give us a thumbs up icon or the old like a -roo, as I like to call it. If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, you may want to do that. We've got a lot of good videos coming up every week, sometimes twice a week. And I look forward to seeing you back here again on Moose Henderson Wildlife Photography very soon. Thank you so much. Goodbye.